one of the many challenges of new beginners growing citrus in container is knowledge. Without the knowledge and the know-how needed, beginners quit growing citrus or give up too soon, especially because their tree is unhappy and heavily infested with pests and disease. So to overcome these problems and overcome this challenge, Greg and I are going to give you the best citrus care, how to grow and care citrus in container. One of the main reasons why your citrus isn't doing well is because you've got it in the wrong potting media if you're doing it in a container. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to cover citrus plants or any other kind of plants as far as that goes in the ground, directly into the ground, because here in the northern half of this country, mm -hmm. we don't have the luxury of planting citrus in the ground because it just gets too doggone cold. Last week we were negative nine, this week we were 68 degrees. Is that crazy or what? That's it's cold. nuts. It's nuts. I can't remember last time in January 1st we were at 65 degrees mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of winter time. But potting mix for your citrus is very, very important. And today what we want to cover are some of the uh, basic fundamentals of what you've got to have in your potting mix and what the requirements are if you want mm -hmm. your plant to thrive. Um, if you're using just soil, native soil out of the ground, uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be good in the long run. It, it may do good for the season, but it's going to compact. It's going to uh, it's just not going to be good. It's not going to drain soil. It's not going to drain very well when you water it. Mm -hmm. Moisture is going to hang in the pot too long, and you're going to get root rot and fungus and everything else. And everybody wants to know why my citrus is dying. Mm -hmm. You can't take the shortcut and the cheap easy way and just go dig some dirt out of your backyard to fill up a pot when you get the plant home from the store or if you propagated it, you've got to do it right. So what we're going to cover today are the basic requirements of your potting mixes. Now, uh, we talk about uh, what is the best, what is the best or ideal potting mix for citrus? Well, so we're going to cover some of the do's and some of the don'ts. Mm -hmm. And uh, first thing we're going to cover uh, is a don't. <laughs> so the don't other than natural soil pure soil uh, that's that's not good so one of the things that people have tried is using wood chips and I don't know if you can see this or not mm -hmm. but these are just large uh, decomposing wood chips and it looks good because it's got that composty look to it that feel of it that is compost um, What's bad about it is that this is in decomposition and it's going to take time to decompose, but it's going to hold and retain way too much moisture mm -hmm. for, your, for your plant. And that's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, it's just too wet and it's going to get, uh, when it decomposes, it's going to also begin to compact. And the, the wood chips, you got all these sticks and stuff like that in there. It's just messy and it's hard to work with. And I wouldn't recommend this. And I haven't heard anybody else that recommends using uh, ground up wood chips. You know, when you bring a, uh, a company out to cut down your tree and they, they chop it up into wood chips and you think, wow, I got all this compost. Throw it in your composter and let it sit there for a couple years. And then you'll be able to go down to the bottom of that and use some of that to mix in with your other potting mix. But not, don't use it as a pure mix for your plants. You need you need a mix that can drain properly and promotes healthy roots as well as good now, aeration. A good mix for citrus is going to contain bark. bark, bark chips. They can be smaller, they can even be a little bit larger. But why why does bark work so well? Well, if you take a look at Mother Nature, when a tree has bark on it, it's to prevent water getting inside the tree. Mm -hmm. It's a protective layer. And what it actually has is a wax built into the uh, bark which resists water, it repels water. And that's what you want in your potting mix. You want your, you want your water to drain very quickly and, and get out. And it's not to provide, your potting mix is not to provide nutrients for your plants. This is basically to sustain the, the root mm -hmm. system. And so that's, that's the first thing. It can be uh, pine bark, fir bark, any kind of bark. Uh, I wouldn't use oak or any of those other kinds though. Uh, use your pine or your fir, mm -hmm. okay? 
you can use charcoal. Charcoal is another charcoal chunks. Mm -hmm. Charcoal is another thing that adds uh, space in your mix and allows water to drain out quickly. It does not retain water. It's just carbon is all it is. It's not a sponge. It doesn't retain mm -hmm. water. It's just creates space. Just uh, a space, space, which really is not as essential because your bark is by itself is going to create space. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is your uh, perlite. Perlite is another substance we use in our mix and because it also creates space, it keeps your soil and your media from compacting. And it also retains a little, about, a little amount of water. Not much. That's mm -hmm. uh, verticulite is the one that will retain the water. The, the perlite is a volcanic ash heated up at 1600 degrees and it explodes like popcorn. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, it's more, more though for spacing and uh, drainage. And then last you want to put in here is your ground up peat moss mm -hmm. and your peat moss is very good uh, it also helps with pH mm -hmm. so uh, this is like I said when you put this all together the main purpose of this is to just give your plants roots uh, a place to absorb water and to stabilize the plant now where do you say where does the plant get its nutrients from well as with any plant that you put in a container you have to fertilize it okay because mm -hmm. you're not putting it in regular soil where it has minerals inside the ground you're going to have to give it some type a of fertilizer. fertilizer okay mama you go ahead and you talk about the the, the uh, fertilizer for your now uh, fertilizer is one of the key elements that will provide uh, your citrus uh, nutrients and I recommend or we recommend citrus stone because it has a, a balanced uh, number of uh, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium and just follow the direction and what is great about uh, using the citrus stone if you try to combine it with epsom salt mm -hmm. and worm casting it does help boost the plant and when you fertilize with this uh, citrus stone fertilize heavily in spring we mentioned this uh, in our previous videos fertilize heavily in spring because they are in active growth they need that amount of nutrients amount of uh, nitrogen so they can photosynthesize because what helps or feeds your plant most likely is the sun now go back with you with the uh, other requirements of the plant beside, aside from fertilizer well the ph is very very important in your plant thriving I don't mm. want to get a lot on that. We've done other videos on pH. We'll you do, can watch do some more later. Videos. Yeah, I'll put a link up above. You can watch it if you want to find out about pH. But if your pH isn't right, your plant is not even going to be allowed to absorb those mm. fertilizers that you're adding to your plant. And your plant's turning yellow. It's getting mottled looking leaves with yellowish and green. And you're saying, well, what's wrong with this plant? It's mm. your pH. Okay, it's your pH. Or you got crappy soil in there and you need to repot your plant and start mm -hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. Do it soon because once it gets to a certain point, it's past the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Repotting it is only going to put it in shock and it's going to completely die. So if you have a plant that's not doing well and you got it in the wrong soil, I would remove some of the top layers of the soil and add, uh, I, I would I would say yeah, worm casting first. Give it some worm casting. It's worm nutritious casting for the for the plant. Awesome. That way you'll see what it is. Now, don't put it. Put the worm casting around the outer edge of the pot. Don't put it real close to the base of the plant. Put it along the outer edge. Sometimes worm casting will be a little bit too too much for the plant, and it might burn it a little bit. So, uh, like uh, in our previous videos, you you work on the fertilizer in the soil instead of mixing directly the soil. I think that was good because you are trying to avoid uh, root burn mm -hmm. that way so it slowly release the nutrients if you you know work on, on the top no, surface. Another way you can test your, your plant to see if it's draining properly is to um, take your plant, turn your hose on and fill, the, fill it up to the top of the pot and hold the pot, hold the pot like this and watch and see how long it takes that water to drain out of air. If it is longer than 30 seconds, you mm -hmm. need to change your media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically your citrus needs is light, water, nutrients, and space. So we're talking about this space, that would be your container. So the size 
of the container and the quality of the container also affect the growth of your citrus yep. as well as the fruit production. Now, based in the container, if it is a small plant, so if you grow this plant in a container, so the suitable container that is best for this is a gallon container. But if you are going to uh, plant a two to three year old tree, then you have to uh, use the five gallon container. And if you waste on growing citrus trees and keep it longer for long period of time in the container, then you might have to use a 20 gallon barrel, right? <laughs> now talking about the container, because citrus can grow any type of container, but there is a container that the citrus will do uh, thrive. The plastic pots are fine when they're 12 inches. And this the is mostly is when you sell. When, <laughs> yeah, and if you're going to sell it, but if you're going to keep it, you want to put it in an air breathing pot so that they, the roots can get air. Oxygen is the main reason why you have to use good potting mix for your roots so mm -hmm. that the roots can get oxygen. If you want to increase the oxygen, put your plant in a air breathing container like the, the grow pots, the sun pots. They have different names for them depending on what brand, but the recycled plastic that uh, is almost like a felt material mm -hmm. and they are excellent the milk crates that we use for our citrus um, are outstanding and just, how about the pot the, the terracotta pot is good too but it just dries so quickly yeah the terracotta pots is great <laughs> are really good for citrus plants also because in the in the when it, these plants act, these pots actually can breathe yeah, to some degree they sweat the soil, so. yeah the water can actually come out the sides of these over a period of time. Plants like terracotta, they stay nice and cool. They stay cooler and retain heat in cooler days and stay cooler in hot days. So terracotta is really good too. Mm -hmm. The potting mix is what we want to focus on today rather than the pH and the types of pots. So getting back to your potting mix, um, they have different ways that you, uh, different potting mixes that you can purchase and some will say for citrus and some will say for philodendrons. They'll have different potting mixes and what makes them different is that they will use finer bark pieces, smaller pieces of bark. They may add lime to the mix and charcoal. Um, different things that may control and alter the pH slightly that that particular variety of plants will enjoy and thrive in. Your orchids, they, they just want a space to hold the roots up right. They don't really mm -hmm. need uh, soil nutrients in the soil. Uh, they get it from from fertilizers and stuff like that. But, uh, your your potting mixes will vary from plant to plant. But again, the main thing it is to hold the plant upright and uh, give it hold some moisture for for it to absorb the water and get to get oxygen from the roots. So it, that's it. It. it is basically it promotes healthy roots if you're using this. Uh, combination of barks and uh, perlite and cocoa, uh, cocoa tea. Now uh, let's get back to the uh, container. The plastic container that you use, that's okay. As I mentioned, it, it, citrus can grow any type of containers. But the problem of the plastic container, it creates root bound. And root binding is where you see the roots twisting around inside uh, inside the container because what it does it is looking for oxygen. Uh, oxygen or space to take up oxygen so you need to create a good proper environment for your citrus to thrive in the container for many years to come now <clears throat> we use the crates because crates are great and it is heavy duty and it's easy for us to move around from place to place you just have to cover it with wood guard to protect the soil from getting out. So we have a video on that, how to uh, make your own container, uh, cell prone container. Watch that video and uh, we showed how to, uh, how to make it. Now, sunlight. So sunlight is another very important in your citrus to thrive and produce fruit. That is the problem why your citrus are not getting fruit. <laughs> so basically citrus needs at least six to eight hours of sunlight so it is necessary to reposition your plant uh, in the direct sun to photosynthesize and produce fruit for you because otherwise if it is not getting the right amount of sunlight your citrus will eventually decline in uh, the health will decline and if it is not uh, if you 
keep doing it, then your citrus will die. Now, in the inside your home or inside the greenhouse, you might not getting the the same amount of sunlight from outdoors that your citrus is getting, but you can supplement a grow light that mimic the natural light. And uh, so, basically, you know, when you grow them indoor, you need to provide a a good some lighting that um, specific for for trees. Now uh, we talk move on to the watering. Citrus loves water, but it doesn't need to put out uh, not too much water. Too much water that keep their feet wet all the once time. A, once a week. Once, once a, a week. week. Yeah. You want to water it thoroughly. Let it drain really good. Make sure it's draining, and then don't water it again unless it's out in direct sunlight. Um, and it's it's heating up too much, but uh, just so stick your stick your finger down in that pot. All stick your finger all the way down in that pot, and if you pull it out, if there's like moisture on your finger, don't water it yet. Mm -hmm. It's got so, enough uh, water. It doesn't have to be. You don't want wet. They like water, but they don't like wet feet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know. So uh, that is what you need to uh, provide with your citrus tree. Now, what else that you need to give them the information on how to successfully grow citrus in container uh, besides pH, uh, pest, and pH, that is fertilizer, uh, container, and then pest, keeping yeah. your keeping your plant free of uh, pest and also disease. You know, um, fungal disease. You know, mostly uh, risk for pest and disease or is when you grow in container as opposed to grow in the ground. And especially you grow it indoor. Well, when you grow in the ground, though, you got a different set of conditions you got to deal with then. Mm -hmm. Whole different set. When you have a plant that's in a container, you control its environment. You control the media. You mm -hmm. control the uh, the amount of light, the amount of water. But when it's outside, the soil is already set. Mm -hmm. There is no variable there. And you the have uh, you have the good. sunlight is based upon the cloudiness and the temper, the time of the year, the pest. Every bug in Mother Nature has access to get to that plant. You have very little control of that unless you are spraying it weekly. Mm -hmm. You got to spray it weekly with some type of a pesticide. Now, in the month of May and April, if you live in a climate where your trees are outside, your citrus trees, and or any other kind of tree, as far as that goes, and it's raining a lot, then you're going to be uh, have to keep an eye on fungal diseases. Mm -hmm. And uh, fungal Most diseases, we get that. We get that in Ohio sometimes in uh, in June when there's a lot of rain. It'll rain for like seven, eight days in a row, nonstop. You know, the, and you got to watch out for the greasy spot. Then that you know mm -hmm. that's a fungal disease. You know what is the worst scenario in terms of this test when your citrus is plagued with multiple multiple pests uh, at yeah. the same time, like spider and mealybugs. That is really of killing your citrus so you have to be aware don't just uh, go down there and water your plants and that's it you have to go there and inspect the the leaves underside leaves uh, the stem anything that you know yeah, and then when happening you, in if your you plants. have a container it, it does make it if you got a, a spray like um like a spray disinfectant or uh, insecticide you spray it on the top but you mm -hmm. the insects your pest underneath so you got to hold the plant up like this and spray it from underneath you got to get the top and the bottom and especially for fungal diseases as well you've got to spray both sides of the leaf to keep it from invading your plant yeah so here is one thing that I also uh, use here and uh, you might notice what I'm doing here because I mostly come here in the greenhouse now even the plants are not uh, sick or don't have pests so what I did, I used this uh, concentrate. This is acetic concentrate. So what you need, just drop one drop in the warm water and mix, mix it. And then with a sponge or cloth, what you need to do is wiping the leaves of your, your plants. And why, why would you do that as opposed to just spraying it? I noticed it, that it's discouraging the pest from getting into it. Yeah, but that's, just like a little yeah, but that's type a, of management. That's a slow process if you have a well, lot of plants. You, this is only when you when you have a disease, just a protection. Oh, just that particular uh, protection plant. For okay, your plants. Yeah. This is what I do. Like I I did this like once a week. So I wipe with 
with this uh, acetic plus and it is not only uh, discouraging pests to get into your citrus it also shine your leaves so that's why it has this mean leaf gotcha all right so now what else do you need to talk about about in terms of growing citrus because mostly beginners give up well other than that's the lights if you're growing your citrus in the winter time and you're bringing it indoors you have to have full spectrum lighting for your for your citrus plant at least eight hours if you live in if you have a sunroom put it next to the window where it gets a lot of uh, a lot of sunlight don't worry about the little cold draft they can tolerate and withstand the drafts that's not going to hurt the plant in fact we have we have uh, citrus plants that are near the outside skin of our greenhouse and they're doing perfectly fine and it'll be nine below zero outside and it's still heated in the greenhouse but uh, it, it won't hurt them but the sunlight you've got to give them full spectrum sunlight at least 65 Kalvins happen. of of light natural light mm -hmm. uh, the leds that they have out now are so much better than the ones that we used to have mm -hmm. with just it's better much better than just a fluorescent bulb and the fluorescent row bulbs they lose their their power very shortly in a matter of a month or so they start dropping and you can get a light meter you can test the light um, the calvins that are coming into that that are hitting that plant mm -hmm. and uh, that's something you want to test make yeah. sure uh, your ph of your water you're using we said we talked about the ph you want to be using around six five six eight ph and uh, get yourself a good water meter you can buy them on Amazon for about twelve dollars. It's just a yellow. It's a little yellow. In fact, my my other one broke. I just ordered another one. It'll be here tomorrow, and we'll show you that in another video in case you can. But just, just look it up on Amazon. I'll put a link for you down below. And it's you get your you get your water and just add a couple drops of vinegar into your water. Test your pH, and if it's around six five to six eight, you're good to go. And your plants mm -hmm. will thank you because if the pH, like okay. I said, if it's not right. The plant cannot absorb the uh, nutrients in your fertilizers. Okay, so another extra information: knowing what citrus varieties you plan on growing in the container. Now, understanding what varieties is also helping your success growing citrus in container because most citrus trees are not container grown and they don't do well in the container for low period of time so for example grapefruit i know i love grapefruit but grapefruit doesn't do well in the container as opposed to grow it on the ground so your best citrus to grow in the container should be like kalamandin like this one here this is kalamandin kumquat uh, oranges like tangerine and burst this lime is, this is bear's lemon we just this is a brand this. new brand new plant called bear's lemon this produces really Really nice lemons. Improved, improved Meyer, and uh, not Meyer, but improved Meyer. Yeah, improved Meyer, right. improved Meyer, and uh, Buddha's yeah, hand. You said you. No, I don't want Buddha hand. <laughs> I think it's I want so the finger, cute. I want the finger lime. You want finger lime? I, want I finger think lime. Buddha's hand is so cute. Yeah, but you can't use it for anything. It's just for decoration. <laughs> yeah, but I really need the kumquat. I I like to grow the kumquat. So those are the citrus trees. Know what citrus types. You want to grow in a container for successful container growing. Don't grow because you love citrus and then you grow as many citrus as you can because some of the citrus as I mentioned they don't do well in the container. Now transitioning your citrus when you grow indoor outdoor. Now when they are keeping indoor for two months or three months how are you going to transition your citrus so they don't go sharp? You give them a couple hours of sunlight outside each day bring it in after a couple hours next day extend it to four hours mm -hmm. and then to six and then at the end of the week you'll be okay to leave them outside all day long yeah so good bring them inside when it starts hitting around 45 degrees i would bring them inside so uh, basically just to, 50, to acclimate to your citrus until it gets used to the environment outside because we didn't endure for a while then you are transitioning them our okay. citrus trees right now it's january they're in full bloom and fruiting right now inside our greenhouse how about pruning is it necessary to prune your citrus absolutely <laughs> i don't if think if it's in the actually yes. you don't yes. need to prune your citrus unless yes, you 
I disagree. You disagree with I that? I disagree. I got a calamansi tree over here. It's in a five gallon pot right now. It's almost six feet tall. I don't like them to get that big. I like them to stay about two and a half to three feet at the most. Anything over that, I cut it off and I use that cutting then to propagate new new citrus plants with that. Can I, uh, can I... <laughs> Elaborate on your idea, go for it. In my, you, you can, uh, in my, my standpoint at least, I normally don't prune my citrus, and here's why. Unless if it is, unless if it is bothering with the plants or uh, cut off the circulation of the plants, like branches like crossing over to the center, then I will take okay. that out. Let me or ask, hold on, hold on, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, if you live in the northern hemisphere and you got to bring this plant in in the winter time, kind of like where you allow your <laughs> bay laurel tree over here to go to five foot tall and we got to carry this baby in in the fall it takes up so much space mm -hmm. it takes two people to carry it in and it just becomes a real pain in the butt to to uh, take care of indoors if it stayed outdoors all day long let it grow as big as it wants but if i got to bring this in the house i'm going to keep it in a in a containable size so i'm all for pruning that that plant and you know what? Okay. Yeah, wait, here. I'm gonna show you where I. I'm gonna catch her in a lie right here. I'm gonna tell you her. If I have See, a plant and I want it to get bigger, have different, uh, I come outside percentage. and I say, "What in the heck happened to my tree over here?" Oh, I took cuttings for propagations. I says, "Oh my God!" So she doesn't let them grow. She cuts them and propagates the heck out of them. There is a reason, huh? Yeah, there's a reason for your madness. So uh, the thing though, what is if you cut the the yeah. Branches. Yeah. Do you know that the fruit sits on the tip of the branches, like this one here? There is, see. Well, but I also see. get blossoms. And then you are. I get blossoms all over the the, the, the branch as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that is uh, his uh, point of view. Now, um, some some citrus. If you purchase a uh, citrus that it is grafted, and uh, when you grow it in the container, make sure that when you grow it, it is above the crown. You don't want to cover that. Uh, what what is the crown? crown? the uh, crown the graft the, the graft the graph. above the graft above the graft and uh, sometimes you get the sucker so you have to remove that that is the cloning that's the, that the, <laughs> that's the little shoots that are coming from yeah. the mother for me I, <coughs> excuse me i think for me when i grow citrus i just need a little bit of cosmetic to keep it shape that's all yeah but letting it grow crazy and out of control is not recommended and then you, you i know it's hard especially if it's blossoming or it's bearing fruit, it's hard to prune them at that point. I would wait until after you pick the fruit before I prune it. I like to keep the fruit on the trees because it gives me an excitement. Look at my tree and look at what you did with your lemon in here. Too much lemon you harvest and you just leave in the cart. <laughs> they, <laughs> oh, I, they're limes. I don't use limes that much in cooking. But there's so many of them. Yeah, oh they're, they're limes, not lemons, and they're already they're, green. they're yellow already, so they're overripe. Then why you did not bring inside instead of just leaving on the pot? Well, so I'm going to ask you the same the question. You saw them sitting there, why didn't you bring them in? <laughs> so all the fruits are in the container, yeah. above in the surface. So this is this is nice. This is a those nice are just lime. limes. Yeah, just here. Yeah, your... yeah I, don't, I don't harvest it because I want to see them I know. You know hanging on well, it also stays fresher if it stays on the tree. Yeah, rather and than just putting the refrigerator and letting it rot. Pick them as we need them, but we like yeah. I said, we don't eat limes that much. I know so that's why, why you want to harvest the fruit why? because you want them to reproduce. Of course, they're not going to reproduce until the fruit are gone. They're yeah, because if blossom. you don't harvest the fruit, so the plant will stop um, stop producing, producing blossoms. blossoms. Right. So I get his point. All right, so that's about it. So this is about it, and I will show you guys. Uh, I will show you how to repot this uh, citrus. I'm going to repot the citrus. We just bought this from the nursery. When was that? Two weeks ago. A month ago. A month ago, and as you can see, it is not happy in this container, and no. it's already packed. Look at the soil; it's packed. The root probably is shrink, uh, shrinking or circling around Swirling. container. Yeah. And I am sure this is a root bound, so I'm going to transfer this and then right. provide a good. You can do soil. that today. Yes, sir. All so right. Well, I'm gonna. This I'm is... out of here from now. Okay. And you can take over here and do this on your own. Thank All you right? for your uh, information. All right. So we are going to plant this uh, 
citrus in this container. This is hydroponic container and uh, we have plenty of holes. So we're going to provide this citrus with a proper environment and we're using this soil mix. All right, so let's do it. So as you can see, it's already root bound and this is the problem. This tree is not doing well. So I'm going to uh, loosen this up a little bit and uh, lo loosen the root. Now I'm going to mix this bark So I will uh, have the soil close to the mid size of the container and I will place my citrus and I will fill in the rest of this soil mix. Alright, so we fill this uh, soil mix in the container and I add another extra bark on the soil surface and I'm going to post it down so I don't create uh, air, air space in here, air pocket. Now when you do your uh, mix, uh, soil mix, you are not adding, I'm not, I did not add a soil acidifier or fertilizer containing acid in my soil mix so this is more of a alkaline side you can use acidifier and spread around the base of the plant and uh, and if you want to use a liquid to a uh, liquid acidifier like using the vinegar which is I'm going to uh, use that in this case. I'm using a vinegar, uh, vinegar solution and I'm going to water my citrus and that will correct the pH. It gives the, uh, it gives lower pH, all right? Okay, so I'm using a vinegar to acidify my soilless and I only need one tablespoon and it is enough to give that acidity so when you use vinegar solution you might check the pH uh, more often like uh, consider checking once every two weeks but if you're using a slow release fertilizer containing acid it has a six months before you check the pits again because it is slow slow release now i'm going to uh, water the citrus So after I water with vinegar solution, I'm going to fertilize my citrus because if it is, if the soil is uh, proper rains, citrus like 6.5 pH rains, it helps the plant to absorb proper nutrients. So I'm going to fertilize this. What I'm going to do, I don't use a soil 
fertilizer that is slow release. I'm using this as uh, soluble nutrients. This is the 2020-20. Hold on, I will mix it in here. So it is great to use uh, liquid fertilizer in, uh, in at this time. It is not the plant is not active, so I just use like a slow, a low strength, like half of this tablespoon, just to give enough nutrients to the citrus. So when you fertilize with a liquid form, make sure that it is given equally so the roots can pick up proper amount of nutrients. And I usually uh, keep it here until the water is absorbed by the roots. And after that, maybe a, a minute or two minutes, I will discard the remaining uh, excess water. So that, that's it guys. So that's how you grow your citrus. Give a proper environment, understand uh, factors contributing to their growth and fruit production. Give them all the necessity, necessities that your citrus needs. All right, so hope this video helped you guys. And if you enjoy watching this video, give thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our channel. Join our Cashew Greens uh, gardening family. So again, thank you for watching. Happy New Year. Hope you all have a good New Year and see you next time.